This is IBM Museum. Just a quick follow-up to a previous video that the IBM System Information Tool, or SIT, that I've been running on various systems. In the previous video, I had run that on a PS2 Model 33, which is called the E, capital E, uh, for its energy rating. But um, SIT went through and identified that as a model 35 slash 40. And I had the thumbnail and pondered within that on why um, it did that. And, of course, we've seen some of the model types being identified differently. But that frontier has been greatly helped now of... Uh, determining how SIT will uh, respond with what unit it thinks it's running on by a, uh, an excellent developer. And I'm, uh, I'm going to provide a link to his, his page um, pages because there are more than one. I'll come back with the, the second page that he has in just a moment. It's applicable more to the uh, microchannel units, which is appears to probably be one of the sole, one of the primary focuses of, of SIT as well and was a, was a question but um, this is just the top of the page of the information that's extracted of the IBM models and there are more than just the PS2s there's also the PS55 models that were in the Japanese market I've referenced those uh, sometimes in my videos, in particular the SCSI adapters that I received from uh, Sandy in Japan, someone that goes by that moniker of Sandy in this case, not his real name. And um, there are even some other intriguing uh, models that are not shown on this screen, uh, like the Value Point series and things like that. But I'll let people, I'll just provide the link and let people go that link and, and look over that information for themselves to get a little bit of understanding. And of course, as I move forward on my developments, I'm going to go through and uh, try and expand that and have those models identified correctly. But it's a, it's a great reference for how um, SIT is actually identifying the, the systems that, it, that it's run on. So... Let's bring up the other page as well here. Okay, and here are the list of the recognized adapters. And I wouldn't even try something that if it works, um, that I can go back to the... Um, okay. I can go back to the list of machines as well, but I'm not... Okay, so I'm not able to, I wanted to try and scroll through the the browser page. I guess I'll just have to, until I learn that a little bit better in OBS, I'll have to um, just um, give links to the pages and, um, and people can scroll through for themselves. Uh, really, the list of, of supported adapters surprised me quite a bit and so I'm going to go through this that's the the two links I had um, you know please go through and review those those pages if you're interested in that um, it's it is um, fabulous content that's that's come to light uh, by that contribution um, but um, you know, and if you like this content, go ahead and click on that like button for this video. Please subscribe to my channel. But this is uh, all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you. Okay, so this is a little bit of an outtake. I think I learned how to 
interact with things here. And this is the mo so this is the all the models uh, as I'm going through and and uh, scrolling through down to the bottom, and even include some ThinkPad machines as well. So that's the supported models page and you can by all means I, i'm gonna include the link you can go there yourself um and you can pause this video if you if you see or want to look through it slower or beyond what i'm doing but i'm going to go through i'll pause and let's bring up the other supported adapters and scroll through that even longer list Okay, and here's the list of recognized microchannel adapters again. And so let me go through and scroll through it as well. And this is a, as I say, I was amazed at the, the length of this list of the recognize microchannel adapters and granted that I've not run the system information tool um, for a video with a system with um, uh, different adapters but it might be even handy as I go through this list and uh, I've got a few of these and uh, certainly can populate a system and even run a reference disk get on it beforehand as prep of the video and um, and and plug that um, have them plugged in and uh, to be able to see how you know see the display of those and wow even adapters that I have here um, around me as well. And on the supported systems, um, it interacts based on some of the values in that table. And um, if you go through and review that, you'll see like the 55SX, it goes through and it, and it um, shows that it has three microchannel slots. And that controls how much, uh, it makes it so the system information tool doesn't show effectively that fourth slot, which is the DBA ESDI drive and so that's apparently how it it does that uh, constraint on the amount of adapters that are shown or what um, that it's truly an adapter in a microchannel slot maybe not necessarily a, a planar resource um, and by the same notion as the supported systems you know by all means, go through and scroll uh, through these even on the, wow, even the gearbox. Now I'll have to see if the gearbox is a um, supported system because it's reporting the microchannel adapters there um, or the, the, the adapters. The gearbox 800 is a, uh, it's a wee bit different. It's, um, and I'm working with someone that I'm, I'm trying to get actually some microchannel interposer for my gearbox. And um, that's a rack mount system. And so it doesn't necessarily have a um, microchannel slots, as it were. It's got a unique bus for itself. And the interesting thing is it seems to be about probably the only system out there that can run both ISA adapters and microchannel adapters. There's mixed bus systems that have microchannel and PCI or microchannel and ESIA. Um, but I've not, um, I mean, you, in those systems, you could run an ISA adapter in an ESI slot, but then you have PCI is the other paired bus with that. So it's, as I say, the Gearbox is a little bit unique. Um, the Gearbox 800 is a little bit unique between the systems of 
ISA plus microchannel adapters being able to be run on it. And I will undoubtedly feature that Gearbox 800 later on. Mine came from the Johnson Space Center. Got a little bit of unknown history to it. I don't know what it was used for at the uh, Johnson Space Center, but that's uh, what the origins of it were. And I have to just remember, I'm, I'm keeping scrolling here. Um, we're nearing the end of the list. There we are. And I'm just going to go through it. I'm not going to like the uh, support systems. I'm not going to scroll back up through the list. And But I'll include the links in the video description. I thought I'd give the uh, outtake after I learned how to uh, do scrolling in the browser capture for OBS and certainly if you um, don't figure that out after the five minutes of searching on Google like I did uh, just post a comment and I can give you the right pointer it's it's uh, easy to do but that's all for the outtake as well this is IBM Museum thank you